Confession, I know an egregious amount about you. Been obsessed since I first showed up on your Salem days. That's why I saved you from the spell you were under. Who are you? I'm... Interesting. With the first episodes of WandaVision spin-off Agatha All Along gracing our screens, theories and rumours are already rife. From Wanda's fate after Multiverse of Madness to who the mysterious teen is, played by Heartstopper's Joe Locke. While most fans are convinced teen is in fact Billy Kaplan, Wanda's son, whose superhero name is Wiccan, there are some who think he may in fact be Agatha's evil son, Nicholas Scratch. For the uninitiated, Nicholas is Agatha's son in the Marvel comic books. He became the leader of the New Salem community in Colorado, populated by magic users, which Agatha left to live among normal people. Safe to say he has a complicated relationship with his mother, with betrayal, backstabbing, imprisonment, possessions and hauntings potentially on the cards if Scratch does make an appearance on screen. Fans have already been speculating he could appear in later episodes. Or is he already here? Here are some of the biggest theories so far. We need to assemble a coven to walk the road, to get our powers back. The road will give you the thing you want the most if you make it to the end. Shall we? While Nicholas hasn't yet appeared in the show, as far as we're aware, that door is certainly left open for his arrival. There's already been a reference to Agatha's evil son. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice that when Agatha returned home in episode one, she stood in a child's room, complete with a drawing signed with the name Nicky, and a choir award embossed with the name Nicholas Scratch. We would guess that these clues are heralding Nicholas Scratch's arrival. Or, at the very least, we're hopeful we'll find out what's happened to him. One theory circulating social media is that Agatha sacrificed her own son for the Dark Hold. After all, the first episodes make a brief reference to Joe Locke's teen being another child's sacrifice. So could Nicholas have been the first? But has Nicholas Scratch already appeared in Agatha all along? Potentially. One of the strongest theories is that Joe Locke's teen is actually Nicholas. Officially, the Heartstopper actor is playing a gothic teen and a minor magic user, but surely it's not that simple. Speaking about the theories surrounding the character, showrunner Jack Schaefer said, Something that I always say is like, you know, with, with WandaVision, with Agatha, and with the way that I like to craft narratives, you know, it's it's not about the answer to the question, it's it's how we answer it. So so I think, um, yeah, I, I, th that's my hope, is that fans will enjoy the the reveal, like how we sort of like unfold and, and um, unfurl um, both the mystery of like, who is this character, but also there is an abundance of mysteries um, inside of this show. So, um, so yeah, there's something for everybody in the in the twists and turns. One of the other slightly more rogue theories declares that Agatha's pet rabbit, Senor Scratchy, is her son Nicholas. It would certainly make sense given the name, but is it a bit obvious? Don't forget, One Division gave us plenty of red herrings. Never forget Ralph Boner. Boner. And we wouldn't be surprised if Agatha all along follows suit. Speaking of potential red herrings, the opening episode carries some disturbing implications for fans of Wanda Maximoff, played by Elizabeth Olsen. The Scarlet Witch was the first MCU hero to encounter Agatha Harkness, who infiltrated her hex on the residents of Westview in a risky bid to steal her power. Alas, that didn't quite go to plan for Agatha, who ended up drained of her own magic and confined to the suburbanite persona she had crafted during Wanda's sitcom-inspired delusions. However, it's Agatha who has the last laugh, because if the first two episodes of her spin-off series are any indication, it appears her one-time rival really has met an untimely demise. The Scarlet Witch's status in the MCU was left somewhat ambiguous by 2022's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but Agatha all along has now confirmed the Wanda is dead. While it's true that the destruction of the Darkhold Castle atop Mount Wondergore looked cataclysmic, horror movie fans know not to assume a character is truly dead unless the film directly acknowledges it, which Multiverse of Madness declines to do. Instead, Wanda simply disappears into the rubble, and, given her incredibly powerful abilities, it's not hard to imagine that she could have cast a life-saving spell at the last moment to keep her in play for future MCU stories. The series kicks off with an homage to Mayor of Easttown and the True Detective, casting Agatha Harkness as a small-town cop investigating grisly cases, including an unidentified body that appears in the woods of Westview as if from nowhere. It's later confirmed to be that of Wanda Maximoff, and we don't have to just take the show at its word. The strongest supporting evidence is how the curse that Wanda placed on Agatha is substantially weakened after the body's discovery, allowing her to retire Agnes and reclaim her true identity. So, it seems that Marvel fans hoping for Wanda's imminent return to the franchise should perhaps lower their expectations. Or should they? Death isn't really a thing in the world of comic books. 
It is technically, but characters bounce back and forth from the great beyond like it's a local Tesco. On the one hand, this damages the dramatic impact when a beloved hero makes the ultimate sacrifice. On the other, it means that fans never have to bid a permanent farewell to their favourite character. The MCU has also presented a flexible interpretation of death, finding ways to resurrect Loki several times and Gamora just the once, not to mention all the heroes that were snapped by Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. So if Wanda really is dead, how could she come back to life in the MCU? Well, the most likely place in which Olsen's Scarlet Witch could reappear is the upcoming two-parter Avengers Doomsday and Secret Wars, the latter of which is expected to take place on a surreal amalgamation of parallel realities, as was the case in the comics. So it's possible that Olsen could return to the MCU as a Wanda variant, of which we've already met two, Suburban Wanda in Multiverse of Madness and Zombie Wanda in What If. Alternatively, the original version that we all know and love could be resurrected via some form of dark magic, perhaps becoming a pawn of demonic villain Mephisto, as WandaVision viewers have long demanded. After expressing some dissatisfaction with how Wanda was handled in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, fans were concerned that Olsen might be permanently moving on from Marvel Studios. However, comments made during the promotional tour for her new Netflix film, His Three Daughters, have reignited hopes that she will return to the MCU at some point in the future. On Wanda's future, she said, it's a character that I love going back to when there's a way to use her well, and I think I've been very lucky that when I started, I was used well. I think people didn't know what to do with me for a second there, but if there's a good way to use her, I'm always happy to come back. So here's hoping that Kevin Feige and co can come up with a compelling enough pitch to get the Emmy and Golden Globe nominated talent back on board. This world you made will always be broken. So what do you think? Will Wanda be back anytime soon? In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.